All right, um, welcome to another week of another conversation. Um, I think now the primary conversation we need to have is about what Raila is calling Kenyans to do. Last week, I talked about how upsetting it is to hear children are starting to adjust their school-going programs based on Raila calling for Mandamano. And it's so bad. And, and let me tell you why sometimes I get upset with this mandamano. It's reached a point where Raila calls for, an, for a mandamano. He doesn't even leave his office. Chaos, chaos, chaos. In the evening he comes out, he does a press conference, and then he announces another set of mandamano the following week. And he, as he condoles with the people who lost property, who lost lives, who have been injured by something that he called. Um, and... It's just terrible where we are. But let, let me let me bring a certain perspective to this issue that we have not we may not have thought about. I had religious leaders call for the president and the and Raila to sit down and come to an agreement about how we move forward as a country. I know it sounds like such a good idea, right? It sounds you know balanced, it sounds wise. But the honest truth is that advice, that kind of advice, is what has gotten us to where we are today. That advice assumes that Raila and Ruto are equal, or are nearly equal, and if they don't agree, this country will not go forward. And that they must agree, they must sit down and agree for the country to go forward. It also assumes that, or it presupposes that Raila actually has a right to do what he's doing. You know, um, and that is how, in my opinion, we have spoiled Raila to the point where we've created a political monster of sorts. The kind of person who will do what he's doing, knowing very well that there's no justifiable end state that is going to support our country to move forward. But because he knows this is something that has been accepted, it was accepted by Kibaki, it was accepted by Uhuru, it's now this pressure now for Ruto to accept it because it's been done before. And I don't know whether he will, um, and he could. But we need to interrogate the concept of what happens in this kind of scenario. And let me give an example. There's been this argument that Raila lost with only 200,000 votes only. And because of that, as many Kenyans voted for him as voted for Ruto. So essentially, Ruto should not just think he can run the country by himself because even Raila got voted for. My good friend, Abdi Shuria, who is a member of parliament for Balambala, got re-elected as MP for Balambala in 2022 with 300 votes. He beat his competitor with 300 votes. He is a member of parliament for Balambala and they are not sharing representation or leadership of that constituency. My other friends, Wanjiko Akibe, Junjomo, a number of MPs from Kiambu and Muranga, were losing an average of 2,000 votes. Right? Kawa Lydia, they lost it, approximately 2,000 votes. Nobody is calling for them to sit down with the person who won to decide how they are going to run the constituency, how they are going to run the CDF, how they are going to decide how to represent the people of the respective constituencies. But somehow we have justified the fact that because Raila lost or loses with a few votes, then whoever wins needs to sit down with him and they decide how they're going to run the country. That goes against the whole idea of democracy. But it's also how we actually end up creating, getting ourselves in the situation we are in right now. People say, Una jujui. Raila has lost. I'm like, you know, the advantage of losing an election is that I can say what it feels to lose an election. Right? I lost the last election. First, you have shock. Of course, it's denial. You deny. You can't believe it. Right? And in a place like Nyeri, where there seems, there seems to be an algorithm, you know, I, I keep making fun how we lost to an average of 200 votes in every polling station. It is possible for me to make an argument 
that justifies how unfair that election was, right? Today, if I wanted to call a thousand people, my supporters, to come out for one reason or the other against the current member of parliament, I can. For example, he recently gave bursaries. And the honest truth is that he did a bad job, right? Despite getting more money than I ever got when I was a member of parliament, he gave less, mo less money per person. I used to give 10,000 shillings to people in campus. I used to give 7,000 sh shillings to people in college. I used to give 5,000 shillings to people in boarding school. He gave 7,000 shillings to people in university. I think five or so thousand shillings to people in colleges and 3,500 shillings to people in boarding or 3,000 shillings to people in boarding, right? So the people of Nyeri are very upset, very, very upset with him, right? He got more money than I did. When we used to distribute bursaries for the entire five years, we distributed bursaries to every single person in Nyeri constituency who needed a bursary. Nobody missed an opportunity to get bursaries from us. The first year he got into office, 4,000 people, by his own words, did not get bursaries. I have an opportunity I can use to go to Mashinani right now and incite people against the current member of parliament. And they would come out in a hurry. Right? But I have a responsibility as well, as a leader, to allow democracy to work. I keep saying politics is seasonal. God willing, I want to run again in 2027. But I have to allow the guy in office now to do his bit. The same way Murugi allowed me to do my bit. I can't go mobilizing people, inciting people every day against him. First, you buy him sympathy. You become an excuse. So if things don't work out, he says, it is your fault. You are the one who kept interfering with him. That is exactly what Raila does. The minute one president wins, Raila goes to the streets. You start creating chaos, you start creating confusion, you start creating just interfering with work. Ruto has been in office for 10 months. 10 months out of 60. He has 50 months to go. But already, Raila is inciting Kenyans to say that Raila, Ruto has failed. I can do the same thing. Anybody who lost, Shuria's competitor could go and incite people in Balambala against him. He also has nearly the same number of people who voted for him as voted for Sharia, right? But is it right? No, it is not. And this is why today I want to call out those of us who keep telling Ruto to sit down with Raila. Friends, we are the ones who are spoiling Raila. We are making him not accept. We are affirming this spoiled habit he has. Think about this. We keep being told that if you spoil someone, whether it is a child or a friend, a spouse, a relationship, if the other person is spoiled, you are the one who gets hurt ultimately. Today, we are actually bearing the brunt, paying the price for having spoiled Raila over the years. We are now in a point where, because there are issues that we are not happy with the government, and that happens everywhere across the world, we have now created someone who uses those issues to keep mobilizing until he is called to the table by the leader. They agree. And this agreement never really uh, um, accommodates the rest of our interests. They'll agree. He will keep quiet. And then the leader can lead, or the president can lead this country without interference. That's what we have done um, in the recent past. That's what we have done over the last 15, 20 years. And that is what I want to suggest that we need to stop doing. The people who are calling for Ruto to sit down with Raila need to ask themselves, if you are running for office, for example, if you are a bishop and you are elected, I don't know many bishops who win the election by more than two, three votes. And then somebody tells you to sit with the person who you are running against and agree how you are going to run the diocese. You know, would you agree? Shouldn't we accept that once you lose an election and it is declared against you, it is your responsibility to convince your followers, one, that you lost the election, two, to allow the person who won to do their bit, three, prepare yourself, regroup, replan for the next election. We can't have a situation where 
we will not allow the person who has been elected to work. We will force that person to divide responsibility with us. And that's why people ask, so why do we go for elections? If I go for an election and I win, and then I have to accommodate the person who beat me, who, who I defeated, why, why do I need to go for an election? So we just sit down and come up with an argument. And, and, and what? Juggle and throw a coin up. Let's accept. If you go to an election and you lose an election, and it is certified that you lost that election, it is, it's your responsibility, not the person who won, you who lost, to go back to your supporters and tell them that you lost. I had that very difficult task of sitting down with my supporters and telling them the last election in Meenda. They could see the issues, they could see the discrepancies, they could see the unfairness of certain things. It didn't make sense. And I had a, an opportunity to build a narrative against the guy who won. I could have gone for a petition. I nearly went for a petition. And then I woke up and said, look, it's five years. I'm going to put a petition in and I'm going to go to court with this guy for the next one and a half years. And then I'm going to become the reason that he's not going to work. Let him. Any mistake now he makes, it is his fault. I'm not part of it. Right? And you get breathing space. You give him breathing space. Right? This is how democracy is supposed to work. So, can we stop that call? Can we stop trying to demand for Raila and Ruto to sit down? Can we tell Raila to accept that he lost the election and work from that basis? Can we stop inciting Kenyans against this government 10 months into the, after the election? Because now we have lost how many lives? 9, 10, 15? People are destroying the expressway. Until you ask yourself, why would you destroy the expressway? What does that have to do with the cost of living? But you can tell there seems to be a strategic thought, strategic effort to sabotage this government economically to force them to sit with the opposition to divide government. We can't keep doing that. We have to stop it at some point. And I'm saying this as somebody who lost an election and who did not go to the streets to incite my supporters. Again, it's the person who lost, who won, despite the fact that I did not believe I had lost fairly. So religious leaders, international community, business community, we really must stop this call to have the person who wins sitting with the person who lost unless we want to stop doing elections moving forward. We need to tell the person who lost it is their responsibility to accept elections. We need to stop allowing them to act like spoiled people. They are leaders. If things had gone the other way around, Raila would be the president today. So he had the capacity and he has the capacity to be president. So let's not baby him. He lost the election. Let's tell him he lost the election. Let him go back, let him regroup, let him tell his supporters they lost the election. He needs to do that. Because until he does that, we will keep having this kind of incitement and destruction of property, loss of lives, and our country is not going to move forward. That is my call for today, right? And I'm calling that, I'm making that call after coming from a very interesting ceremony. As you can see, I'm wearing some outfit called Veterans. Veterans is a group in Nyeri County that brings together people from various political walks of life. And these guys come together and eat nyama, hang out today, they were playing football with the media team, despite the fact that they support different political formations. Because they realize politics is seasonal and politics is not as important as Nyeri County. This is the kind of spirit we need to see at the national level, where people actually realize that none of us is more important than the interests of the country, than our nation, than our nation state. So. We keep shooting from Ruare. We keep inviting you to Ruare. Chai na mandazi, nyama choma, pilau, soup, kapilipili, pombali. Please come and visit us. God bless you. God bless Kenya.